Check, check. Checkaroo. Check, check. Hello, people that have shown up nice and early. Apologies for being slightly late. I just have to do a little social media link posting and then we'll get to painting. Thank you for your patience. Instagram was very uh, borked this morning, but it looks like it's working now. <laughs> so at least I can actually use the link widget. It's crazy how much people's everyday life can be affected by one company's service going down briefly. Am I right? Ah, oh dear, and it seems the my Instagram story sharing no longer is giving me the option to also share to my Facebook story. Boo hoo. Woe is me. The Zuck strikes again. All right, let's just make sure the story post actually happened. Okay, good. Did my tweet, I hesitate for a second. Is it a tweet or a, z a exit? My post on X, I hate calling it X. I usually call it Twitter like most people. Okay, that's done. Let's get the phone out of the way here. Lower the holding screen. Uh, 
Yeah, I gotta remember to record part of this session in case. So we got our, our friend the Gushin Delanza kit bash here, because, you know, we need to reference its base. Our glorious thick boy. And as you can see, I've blocked out the pattern on this base here already. Okay, I'm gonna just adjust my background light a tiny bit. Fun little spotlight there. Why not, right? Give myself a little glowing backlight. Let me know if the uh, audio sounds loud enough, by the way. And I think we want the camera to be just a little bit brighter. Oh, it seems the chat box is here for some reason. I thought I got rid of that. And where would that be? Ah, oh, there it is. Alright, just getting my screen set up properly here. I'm drinking coffee right now, so I don't know how the burps are going to be. Happy Tuesday, 0EXE111. Also, congrats the other MC on being first. Appreciate you. Okay, let's put the Gushin in the corner so you can, can see his feathery hat. Do need it slightly out of the way though, so I have room to paint, of course. How's everyone been? It's been a while since the last stream. Hope everyone's been well. Saw Dune Part 2 twice this weekend. And had a great time. Uh, okay, let's put the... Wet palette somewhere where you can all see it. <clears throat> this thick boy needs a bit of a dusting. Yeah, it's the uh, camera's a bit zoomed in, so it's hard to actually get it in frame. And uh, this is a fresh wet-ass palette, or a, a fresh paper in the palette. Lots of, had lots of water in here, so I'm actually going to use this pipi pipette to suck some of it away because there's actually too much water in it right now. And the paper's sliding around. That's better. All right, now I just need to grab uh, grab the paints. I just saw that screenshot you sent me, MC. Very nice. Very encouraging. Oh, and I also need the glaze medium, of course. This bottle of glaze medium looks like it's pretty much dead, actually. There's still a bit of medium in it, but I might need to, like, take the nozzle off and give the contents a slight stir. Let's see, I'm gonna grab... Oh, I can just use the end of one of these brushes. <clears throat> mm, 
And I'm also realizing now I should have brought Ariel out to just show off for the stream because we are painting its base after all. Yeah, look at that goopy medium. This uh, glaze medium is a little old. Okay, I think what we did, we're just going to add just a tad of uh, airbrush thinner into here and give it a shake. And then when we, um, or when I'm, when this runs out, I should have, a, I think I have another bottle of glaze medium. I always try and keep at least one backup glaze medium on hand, just because I use it often enough. All right, now I'm just going to vigorously shake this for like a minute. I don't know if the mic's picking that up at all. It doesn't have a steel ball in it or anything. I don't know what the weather's like where you all are, but the temperature where I'm at has been very cold lately, but now the temperature is shifting to be warmer rapidly and my joints are all aching because I'm old now, I guess. That pressure change, am I right? Okay, so in case you missed the video that this Gushin was in, or this Gushin kit bash, we've got our kind of quartered circle here with the uh, alternate alternating gradients. Uh, and the quadrants are for the game mechanics. Uh, if you're playing Gamma Wolves, the front arc would be pointing this way. So in that case, I could turn his head to face that way. But other games, the front arc might be like this way, and then you have a left and right side. And, you know, want the model to be usable for multiple games. And the sky's all filigreed up, and Gundam Ariel is also filigreed up. Because they're on the same team, so they're going to have the same color base. Before I put any actual paint on, I do think I need to bring out Ariel just to... Just so y'all can get a look quickly. We are painting her base after all. She deserves to... Deserves to be here. All right, here's the Ariel from uh, August, I think. So yeah, you can tell that these two are supposed to be on the same Gamma Wolves team. And uh, I haven't entirely decided how Ariel is going to be mounted to the base yet. It's probably going to be like, oh, I'm going to just glue this part of the stand to the base. I think I'll have to cut the peg. We'll see. I'll be doing that off camera. Generally things that I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna execute those might get done off camera. Not all the time though Goblins send help The leftover models for major Conventions came back to the shop today. Ah <laughs> Which models are you talking about there goblin? Also, hello the mighty Joe studio Thanks for stopping by So uh, our darkest blue is game color night blue, and let's compare. Okay, so the dark blue, the, these black areas, uh, we're just basically gonna cover them up with a dark blue. This base 
is black plastic, but I primed it black over top because you kind of need prime or like you can paint without the primer on there, but hand painting stuff on without primer is not super fun. <laughs> Everything. Are you which are you gonna buy one goblin? Or are you saying send help because you're gonna because you don't have any money? I don't have much money either. I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. This needs a bit of a shake. We're spurting. This bottle's almost empty, but I do have another bottle of it. Gundam, Digimon, Super Robot Wars, Kamen Rider, Ultraman. Do you have that new, new-ish, uh, Metal Greymon kit? That one looks pretty sweet. You know, I'm a little biased because I do like Metal Greymon a lot. Okay, we can start with a nice thick brush. We don't need to bother thinning with the glaze medium at this point. <clears throat> oh, you have to put it all up and you're working at a shop. Is that what's going on then? And you can also tell this paint's a little old because it's it looks thicker than it should be. This part's nice and chill or just just slop and paint on. I suppose I could I could try and be like super careful around the edges and preserve that black rim so I don't have to repaint it later, but it looks like when I did the other blue on here, when I was blocking out the shape, I already had some spillover and it's likely I would have spillover anyways from um uh from just the amount of glazing I'm gonna be doing. It tends to get a little chaotic if you've seen me paint these kinds of bases before. And I also am winging, I, ca I sort of measured out the quadrants to make sure they're even, but I'm not like making sure it's like exactly precise. Should probably move the camera a little closer since I'm just painting it on the desk. Sorry for the shaky cam there. Mm, thank you, Rayma Cram, for the super chat saying my works are awe-inspiring. Thank you very much. That's very encouraging, and I appreciate it. I don't know what currency symbol that is. On my stream overlay, it's converted it to... Now that I say that, I don't know if my currency stream d displays in Canadian or American. I think it's American. <laughs> I appreciate the super chat, no matter what the amount, though. We could rotate the palette so you can actually see the paint. How about that? Goblin, what's the shop you work at like? Is it a just a model kit hobby store or is it like a toy or game store that happens to also carry model kits? Is 
There's one store I used to go to more often that's like mostly a Magic the Gathering Pokemon card shop, but then they also have Gumpla stuff. And then there's one that's like just kind of a Japanese pop culture knickknack shop that also sells like some cosmetic like stuff and I think they have Korean and Chinese stuff too and like car accessories but then they have like a wall of the shop that's Gunpla as well. <clears throat> okay. Um, before we... Maybe we do block. Yeah, let's let's just block in a bit of the top color, which is sky blue. We only need a little bit of this because... Yeah, only a little bit, and I think we can. Uh, we'll start without mixing it. It's mostly just to block it in. Probably need to switch to a smaller brush, too. Models, anime, and movie collectibles. Sounds like my kind of store. Yeah, I like how big this brush is, but it does, uh, as you can see, it does not hold the tip very well. It wasn't that expensive, so. All oh, right, I needed to record this stream. I'm gonna move the wet palette somewhere where it's easier to see. Uh, different brush. Yeah, that one doesn't hold the tip that well either. We're gonna... I think when I get towards the, like, final edge highlighting part of the base, I'll break out the nice brush that I save for, like, high effort things. But the glazing gets really messy, so I typically use, like, a, a garbage brush for that. At least the initial parts of it. All right. So we only really need this much around here because when I'm looking at the Gushin space, it's it looks like the top end of the gradient isn't this pure sky blue. Pure sky blue gets used for like the very last of the edge highlights for maximum impact. And you can see this night blue dries to basically be almost black. I've been uh, I've checked out that new FX show called Shogun, not quite Gunpla related, but sort of because it's a <clears throat> a Japanese. Well, it's an American production. It's kind of like an American Japanese co-production almost. It's a samurai show, so it's very good. I like it. Would recommend. <clears throat> okay, now our main color is um, <clears throat> Magic Blue, the new game color formula. Gonna get a healthy dollop on there. This is gonna be the largest block. And once we get this blocked in, then it's time for some mixing and blending. AKA the fun part. And yeah, don't be afraid to let me know if the camera focus is getting all wacky and stuff. Sometimes I get in the painting zone and I don't always pay attention to the monitor. Yeah, 
Yeah, I like Vallejo game color. <clears throat> the new game color range is, has a matte finish, which I enjoy. <coughs> However, I am slightly annoyed that some of the paints, the the tone of the color changed a non insignificant amount, but the name of the paint stayed the same. And that's something that happens with like, I've seen it happen with Games Workshop specifically before. Because, you know, they're like trying to change and improve the formula and whatnot. I still think like at the end of the day, I prefer Vallejo model color over game color because it's a bit bigger and it's a bit more consistent. But I think like it was, <clears throat> excuse me, yesterday or the day before, I saw An Angel Garaldes, the Spanish painter, post something about a, because he helped formulate the new game color range with Vallejo because he's like one of the world's best miniature painters and he works with Vallejo a lot. And I saw something they were posting about, like, they're working on a, a new model color now, so maybe the same thing will happen with model color. But if they change the model color formula to be more matte, like the game color formula, like, I don't think that'll be too bad. It's more like, I hope the paint, the, the names and the tones of the paint stays the same. Uh, yes, not buying stuff at work, that's hard. I, uh, I went through that a lot. I bought a lot of or I spent a lot of my paycheck at the store I worked at when I worked at my local game store. But on the other hand, that's how I acquired a lot of the painting supplies that I still use now. So, All right, before we get into mixing glaze medium, we're still kind of blocking in colors, but now we're like blocking in the in-between tones. So we're mixing some of our uh, magic blue with the night blue here. There's... Okay, we'll just use a bit of that. Mm -hmm. It's not quite dry yet, so let's mix in a bit more while we wait for that to dry. All you want to do is paint your hell blasters. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling, Xerox. What what's your hell blasters? You're not. I'm assuming you're not referring to the hell blaster volley gun from Warhammer Fantasy. Oh, this paint's being stubborn. Do we have a cloggage? I think we might we might have a clogged nozzle here. Grab a toothpick. Am I still using Gamma Wolves for my game system? For gunplay, yeah. Gamma Wolves is still my main system for gunpla and then i've got some like homebrew stuff i've been working on but mostly the only gaming i've done for the last while has been <laughs> well baldur's gate 3 but also uh playing conquest at the local game store but you know as you can see i am painting a base for the aerial for using gamma wolves specifically so Clearly, I'm gearing up to play some more Gamma Wolves. I will say that don't expect another battle report anytime soon. Because those are just a bit too much effort for me to be able to produce right now. But like I said last time I brought it up, it's on the list, among many other things. Ah, uh, here we go. This is the good stream content, some paint mixing. Oh, uh, yeah. This is what we came here for, right? Mixing some blues together on the WAP. Primaris Hellblasters. Oh, okay. I'm not a Space Marine player. I wouldn't know that. Or I'm not a 40k player either. With the, Aside from video games, the only 40k I played was Kill Team, and I didn't play Kill Team since the 2019 edition. Or, the last time I played was in 2019, so whatever the edition was back then. 
I don't. I'm not sure. That may have been like second or. Yeah, it's hard to say because for a while I kind of lived as a white dwarf supplement and didn't have an actual book. And when I want to play Kill Team these days, I just play one page rules. I will say the uh, the the new crew models for 40k that they revealed at the Las Vegas Open a week or so ago or two weeks ago, and those look pretty great. I used to have a Tau army, and I always thought the crew were pretty fun guys. So I'm glad they got a little glow up. Ah, nice hunter. Yeah, 30 minute missions are very good for Gamma Wolves. Oh, nice Xerox. You got the book. It's a, it's a very, for, the, for what you pay for the book, I mean, I've gotten a lot of entertainment value out of it. So I'd say it's good value. I'm going to use my air blower to dry up some of this blue paint here. I want another video <clears throat> video that I have on my endless list of ideas is to like go through and like give advice or rank the like the weapon options for gamma wolves. Some of them are better than others I've found. You know? Some things I've considered doing some house rules home brewing on, but I guess I haven't played it enough yet to really get to that point. So yeah, this part of the blocking in the gradients, it's still very much blocking in. I'm not using any glaze medium yet. And there's a bit of back and forth. Just like, you know, putting in some gradient here and then b being like, okay, I need to change that a bit because it doesn't quite match the other side. And then once I kind of have the spacing of stuff, Figured out more or less. Oh, yeah, I tore up a. Accidentally tore up a puddle, a pool of paint there that I shouldn't have. Well. A space rule set homebrew. Nice, yeah. Yeah, it's another interesting thing to consider. I found with like mech games. It's like there's a lot of cool game design stuff you can play around with in terms of like how you're doing like are you fighting somewhere like the moon where there's a little bit of gravity or are you in space where there's absolutely no gravity i guess that's one of the neat things about uh the video game uh battle operation 2 because there's like ground battles and space battles in that i haven't really played that game I've just watched some of it. I don't have any games installed currently because I was playing too much Baldur's Gate. <laughs> That's like much like Total War. Uh, Warhammer Baldur's Gate 3 is uh, one of those games that's like crack cocaine for me, you know? So you can kind of see uh, here, I like put the brush through a, p a pool of blue paint that wasn't quite finished drying yet. There'll be a, a number, I'm sure there'll be a number more imperfections like that across this base, but 
most people look at the base, they're not going to see that. They're going to see the model that's standing on top of the base. At least that's the hope. Another thing for Gamma Wolves I need to try eventually is find some sort of model to use for a small frame, because at least the way I've interpreted Gamma Wolves, high grade Gundam, it's kind of like a medium frame. At least that's how I'm doing it. So it's like for a small frame, could do an SD Gundam, but I don't exactly like the chibi looks, so... Find some sort of non, like, mobile suit model that still goes well with the mobile suits I do have. You know, some sort of, like, support bot, perhaps. I guess it would still be a mech, but the model itself. Maybe I'll look for some sort of robot type thing. But uh, I've had, I've been okay um, when building my crews. There's, like, multiple crews you can build that without having any small frames, so it hasn't really been an issue. It's more like if I wanted to play a more, like, a more higher model count Gamma Wolves list. The two crews I have now, it's like one is four members and the other one is three. And this, uh, oh, this one with the filigreed crew, it'll probably end up being four. We'll see how it goes. It's kind of, I'm kind of just, uh, the crew is developing as I go. Very slowly, of course, because, you know, it's not the only game I play. And unfortunately, the... Tried to experiment a bit this year with pivoting the content a bit, but it hasn't been working, so um, I've, been, I've been pretty silent lately because I've just been gearing up to do content a bit differently, but differently in the sense of the production. I need to scale it back a bit just to give myself an easier time, but not different in the sense that I just like need to focus a bit more on the painting. But with that said, the last two videos I have done are still like fairly painting centric. What's burned me mostly is doing the conquest video videos when most people subscribed here aren't interested in conquest, which I can't blame you for. It's a little painful because I do like conquest a lot. Still want to do conquest content. I'm just gonna. It'd be better. I, I'd be better off doing a separate channel to focus more on the tabletop gaming stuff at this point. But I need to put a lot more effort into the main painting channel here before I <clears throat> have the breathing room to start another channel. But when I say start another channel, it's not really like starting another channel because it's like it's still me putting out content. I'm just like spreading it out into different places so the YouTube algorithm treats me better because <laughs> it's unfair. You know, that's, that's niche content for you. Woe is me. I'm having fun slopping all this blue paint all over the base, though. This is a great time. And, uh, I've, it's been nice seeing how many of you have come up to check out the stream, so appreciate that. Hexagear Governors. I'm going to look that up right now. Oh yeah, they're kind of like uh, dudes in power armor, sort of. Be funny if I just had like a Tau Crisis battle suit alongside my Gundam for my Gamma Wolves team. Okay. Think we'll do. 
We'll do one more pass without the glaze medium because we need to tidy up the edges here. So we'll do one more pass to really block out this gradient and then we'll start uh, using that glaze medium. I've got basically pure night blue here. Just to tidy up the edge. The edge of the pie slice shape anyways, the we'll have another chance to clean up the <clears throat> the dividing line once the glazing is over cuz that dividing line is going to get sort of pseudo edge highlight Sticking to this mostly pure night blue, we're just going to get some of that at the very bottom. Aiming to have roughly the same size shape on the mirroring side here. While this paint is still wet, I'm going to do just a bit of a bit of wet blending. Might as well while the paint's wet. So as you can see, I'm grabbing, I'm like mixing the paint right on the surface. That's what wet blending is. You gotta work pretty fast because you know the paint dries. got to be careful not to tear up that paint before it's dry that the paint up at the top there that's like to the point where it's too it's like no longer wet enough to wet blend without risking tearing up the paint before it's fully dry so i see the wet blending stuff it's like if if i see the opportunity to do it it's like a good bonus but the majority of like the gradient work comes from doing the uh, the glazing and the uh, uh, saying just glazing maybe isn't like the most accurate thing either because there is sort of some uh, or, like there can be some wet blending involved with the glazing. Okay, and before moving on to the next side, I'm just gonna go right into the wet blending because it's a bit of a bigger air or like a longer edge and thankfully like I haven't tidied up the bright part of the edge of the gradient so if I have a little spillover in this wet blending step it's no biggie
Hopefully I've been doing an alright job at keeping it in focus. I'm definitely feeling like I'm getting in that painting zone. I'm sure many of you will be pleased to know that I went to the karaoke bar over the weekend for my birthday, and uh, they had Gundam Wing OP, Just Communication, in their library, so of course I sang that. I also sang uh, uh, Crazy Noisy Bizarre Town by The Do from JoJo's Part 4. So, you know, karaoke was a great success when you can... It's always a great success when you can sing some anime OPs. Okay, let, let's... Gotta switch to the slightly better brush for control just for this sky blue here. To tidy up the bright end of it. Just gotta do the... Kind of triangle shape. Might as well try and do a wee wet blend. <laughs> That's right, TMJ. Yeah, I mean, I didn't scan the entire, like, book there for every JoJo OP, so maybe they would have had it. But... What's your favorite part? I think my favorite JoJo is probably Jolene. It's hard to say what my favorite part would be, though. Part 4 was... All right, I think part 4 I enjoyed the side characters the most. And all the, like one-off side episodes i did enjoy part five a lot always have a soft spot for part two as well <laughs> i think if i was a jojo character my stand would be called freak on a leash that was another song I sang at the karaoke bar on the weekend. Because I'm a f frickin' weeb. Part 4. Part 4 is definitely a contender for one of my favorites. Uh, okay, let me do this side. I got uh, I got unreasonably upset every time I look at Joe Taro's character design in Part Four because you know, and I I get that's that's the point for his hat to have like the dumb like where does the hat start and the hair end from Part Three, but then the fact that they made his outfit white in Part Four just to like make the dumb hair like blending into the hat a like literal white to black gradient. <laughs> I got really triggered by that the first time I saw it. So perhaps that was Araki's intention. <laughs> Who knows? You never know with JoJo character designs. That's what makes them so good. OK, 
okay, we're, we're definitely blended into some sort of gradient now. And, uh, I think it's time for some glaze medium. Yeah, Kira is probably the best villain, yeah. K Killer Queen is an amazing stand as well. I was, like, super hyped the first time Killer Queen showed up. Yeah, Jotaro's, o uh, Jotaro's Stone Ocean outfit is way better. And one of my favorite, like, dumb, like, bad guy characters is from Part 6, uh, Sports Max, with his stand Limp Biscuit. Which the English subtitles translates into flaccid pancake, which is just amazing. Okay. Let's load up the palette with all three. Probably only need a teeny bit of the night blue. This stubborn, almost empty bottle of night blue. There we go. All right. Now for just a couple drops of glaze medium. Now I think this brush is no longer going to be adequate. Let's see here. Hmm. Actually, may, let's 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 not fully give up on this brush yet, because we are gonna get a lot of paint in the ferrule just from this thin ass, glaze and thinned down ass paint uh, words. <clears throat> so could maybe almost use a bit more glaze medium. Oh, we can start with the pure magic blue here. I'm just going to do a line in basically the middle. And make sure that's just kind of roughly at the same spot for each quadrant here. Because, you know, ideally we want the gradient to line up across each quadrant but then, you know, be reversed, as you can see. But the middle part should line up, is what I'm trying to say. All right, now, start mixing. Get a bit more glaze medium up in here. Probably use up this bottle today, which I think will be fitting. Or a fitting use for the last bit of glaze medium.
And of course, this is where I'll really get in the zone. All right, that needs a moment to dry. I will switch to the brighter side now. <clears throat> and painting this style of base is probably the best example I can give of of how integral a wet palette is for uh, my style of painting at least. Doing this would be so much worse without a wet palette. Typically for uh, Gundam projects, I'll use my bigger Army Painter wet palette, but since I'm just doing the base today, I'm using the smaller uh, Frontier Wargaming wet palette. So I, got, I got some spires on the painting bench right now I've been working on off-camera because I got a bunch of Conquest minis I got to finish in time for a convention in June. So I'll just use half this palette for the base and then the other half we use on those spires. And that was Okay. I need to grab some water. Which is should work out because this palette just needs a moment or the base needs a moment to dry i will be back in like one minute I am back. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Well, let's uh, let's refresh the palette with a bit to glaze medium. I'll use this brush just for mixing at the moment, and then I think I switch to a smaller brush. It's time for just a bit more control. I'll work on this area because it looks the driest. So 
Uh, hopefully you can all tell how I'm... Now that I'm a bit further along with the blending, I'm trying to be a bit more precise with it all. I'm kind of going back and forth, being like, oh, that's too bright, oh, that's too dark. We'll have to let that part dry now. I reckon, so I'm probably on like, I'm on glazing pass one still. So there'll be at least one more pass of glazing across the whole base after this before we get to edge highlighting. Possibly like another one or like one and a half. I don't know, it's the whole process is pretty free form. It's not that helpful to categorize this categorize the stages that specifically If anyone's wondering about the next video, I finished the first draft of the script yesterday. Still need some pretty heavy revision, I think. Just don't expect a video this week. But, trust me, I want to get out a new video as bad as I'm sure... Plenty of you want to see one. It's just been a bit of a rough year. <laughs> or the end of last year and the beginning of this year has been a little rough. But don't worry, I'm having a good time painting this base. And uh, as much as I did say don't expect a video soon, I do have some some projects lined up that I can do streams with. So I know there's a, it's pre there's a, there's a pretty big, big gap between this stream I'm doing now and the last stream I did, but uh, there should be hopefully significantly less of a gap for the next one. Also, thank you for the $5 super jet, uh, the Mighty Joe. Oh, you want to see me paint another artifact kit? Oh. Yeah, when you have time, you 
see about sending me one. Oh, that'd be very generous. And yeah, like, I'm glad you said when you have time, because if you're sending me something, you gotta be okay with the fact that it might take me a while to get to it. But I do, uh, I did enjoy painting the Nightingale artifact that I did. But yeah, feel free to slide into my DMs about that anytime. I, uh, yeah, I didn't enjoy the... I didn't enjoy building the Gundam Artifact Nightingale as someone who... I think I pro I'll just rehash what I said in the script for the video I did that one in, like... As someone who's built a lot of miniatures, building the miniature-sized Gundam was, like, not optimal at all. It was, like, very clearly... Like, a shrunken-down model kit, and it would have been way easier to work with if it was just, like... Designed like a miniature, but, you know, it makes sense why it's designed the way it is. Because, you know, Bandai produced it. I did, I do enjoy my night, Nightingale a lot. And I actually won an award with that one. Oh, they got better after uh, set one. That's good. Well, the set, you said you bought a set of four, which says that, like... I, I vaguely remember what's in set two and set three, but it's been a while since I looked. Also, hello, go for it, painting. Thanks for stopping by. And yeah, I feel like most uh, modelers who do videos or stream or whatever probably have a say a similar thing if if they get offered stuff to be sent. It's like. Yeah, I'd love that, as long as there isn't, you aren't expecting me to do something with it by a certain time. That's like, if you want that to happen, that's like you're getting into sponsoring a video territory or sponsoring a stream. And, I mean, for the most part, I think, whether it's a company or just like someone sending stuff for support, I think most people are pretty understanding. And they're just sending it in the first place because they want to support, not because it's like, I need to see you work on this immediately. <laughs> At least sending a Gundam artifact kit in the mail will be a lot cheaper than sending a full Gunpla kit. <laughs> Box is a lot smaller. High mobility type Zaku 2. High mobility type Zago 2 Gaia machine. Mash machine Super Gundam Palace. Athena Wing Gundam Tories. Okay. A lot of those would be fun to paint. I tend to lean towards the bad guy suits. Like the Zakus and the Tull Geese. The Tull Goose. Well, if you need it for next week, you're gonna have to pay gonna have to pay express shipping for it to get here in time for me to finish it next week so like overnight and then you're gonna have to pay my overtime fees because i'm gonna have to be like painting and editing non-stop <laughs> it's like painting this Tiny Gundam's very important. I need it done by next week. Our paint water is a nice blue right now. Nice blue milk. Take a sip. See the future. Yeah, because... Uh, okay. Okay. Forgot to explain the first part of the reference there. It looks like the water of life from Dune. Take a sip, I can see the future. Uh, I think we need to blow a bit of air on this base to speed up the paint drying. This is a tool from my previous work as a photographer. It's just like an air blower, and it's, uh, it's very useful. I recommend, because it just gives you, like, a quick way to blow off some dust before you're taking photos or like dry some paint. I 
I've gotten a lot of use out of it, both for photography and for modeling. Okay, well, that's finishing drying. Let's reload the old palette here. I should just be storing this <clears throat> night blue bottle upside down so I don't have to violently shake it every time I need paint. Just need a little squirt. Just a little squirt, come on. This is, get, this is the awkward stage because I need to squeeze harder and harder and then the I'm worried the paint bottle is just gonna or the nozzle is gonna blow off, which has happened before. Yeah, this paint bottle's a little old because it keeps getting clogged. It's thicker than it should be. There we go, we got it. Okay, now I'll remember to actually store the bottle upside down in case we need more. Any of y'all watching gonna play Gundam Breaker 4 when that comes out? I don't think I'll have time to, but uh, it looks like a pretty fun game. not going to add any other paint to the palette yet. I'm just going to work on blending the dark end of the gradient for now. So I guess in theory we could say we're at the second pass glazing stage, which should be the last one. We'll see. And can see it's like there's the gradients a little it's like too bright over here so the black needs or the dark blue needs to just be pulled up a little bit these two sides look okay maybe it could use a bit more of the bright side and like the very top end of the bright gradient needs to be a little bit brighter <laughs> yeah, the entry grade strike, the, the Baja Blast entry grade strike looks pretty sweet, but yeah, I'm not going to be pre-ordering that either. Mostly because I'm very poor, but uh, it's a pretty fun pre-order bonus and, you know, very fitting for that for that game in particular. In my, in my house, we've already got a fancy entry grade strike, my... Uh, partner blue parappa bought the 7-eleven edition you had to pay a lot for it too because you know it's like imported so they don't sell that regularly solomon gp02 and perfect grade unleashed Devan. is that solomon one a one 100 scale that's a pretty big one right Mm, yes, I heard of this. I heard of this one. Well, those sound like some pretty juicy projects to dig into. 
probably more exciting than the Baja Blast entry grade strike at the end of the day. I don't know what it's actually called. I'm just going to forever call it the Baja Blast Entry Grade Strike. Speaking of Baja Blast, there's a weird, strange first world problem in the city I live in where it's a, it's a food desert for Taco Bell specifically. Me and Blue Parappa, there's like, there's like a few, or like two or three locations in the city where there's still Taco Bells. And we went to, me and Blue Parappa went to one the other week that was like, it's like one of those combination KFC and Taco Bells, but we went there and the, the Taco Bell sign was still up on the road next to the KFC sign, but we go inside and now it's just a KFC. We were very upset. <laughs> it's like there's another fast food chain here called Taco Time, which is like... It kind of, it's like pretty similar to Taco Bell, but they don't have Baja Blast, you know, so. And there's a bunch of Taco Times here. But the Taco Bells keep disappearing, so obviously it's a conspiracy. Like we found some Reddit post of someone complaining about the same thing, being like, there's only, there's one Taco Bell for even, uh, there's one Taco Bell for every 400,000 people in this city. That's unacceptable. Oh, damn, you haven't had Taco Bell in 15 years? So if you take a sip of Baja Blast, you would truly get Baja Blasted. Yeah, he, my my dad's from California, so he makes like a, all right. He makes a lot of Mexican food, and I ate a lot of it growing up. But yeah, it's like it's hard. Sometimes you just have a craving for that, like very like chemically engineered addictive fast food, or you know that you the unique tang of a Baja Blast. Are there a lot of Taco Bells in Mexico? I don't actually know. It's been a I haven't been to Mexico in, uh, geez. I don't think I've been to Mexico since, like, 2008. I've never been to Mexico City. Zero Taco Bells in Mexico, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> so it'd be a bit redundant for Taco Bell to try and get into the Mexico market. I don't think Taco Bell needs to or deserves to be there, but who am I to say? All right, this gradient's looking pretty good. What do y'all think? Should probably compare it some more to the Gushin. <clears throat> it's 
This might be good enough to stop now. Stop with the glazing, I mean. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Actually, I could see a few areas that just need a tiny bit more glazing. Just a, just a smidge more. Now the trick here is going to be to make sure not to paint too much because if I, if I get, because there's a chance I'll just like glaze too much and need to re-blend a bunch again. So we're only looking for little adjustments at this stage. Need a little bit more magic blue on there. Let's just put it on the palette now. Might as well add another drop of glaze medium too. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. And sometimes I wipe the paint off the brush and kind of feather the edge a bit to blend it in. That can be effective, but again, you got to make sure you work fast while the paint's wet. No, too bright. There we go. So I'll catch up with the chat in a moment. I gotta work while this paint's wet. Oh, Dolfo, thank you for the 2350 super chat. Oh, sorry, I mean, 2350. You champ. <laughs> thank you. You are helping me pay off my credit card right now. <laughs> While well, everyone giving me super chats is, I should say. 
Much, much appreciated. It's it's always reassuring to come back from being absent for a while and have people tune into the stream and give super chats and all that. Okay. Just about done this uh, uh, gradient blending, I'd say. And yeah, Dolph of it is a WAP. You know me, I always gotta have, or almost always gotta have my WAP. Oh, and in regards to that comment you made on my post yesterday about photography stuff, your the photos of your Shinanju kit look, like, pretty solid. I'd say what you can, like, work on next if you want to improve your photos would be your posing and, like, play around with the, uh, the, the zoom on your camera. Like, you could try take photos that are where the camera is like physically closer to the model, but you're using more of a wide angle to your zoom. Try experimenting with that. That that taking a photo that way works good a lot of times if you're doing like a really dynamic pose. But yeah, I mean, I, doing a, some sort of like photography tips video has also been on my like endless list of video ideas for a while. That's one where it's like. That's one where I know it'll just take, like, a lot of mental energy to try and, like, figure out how to structure. Because I've been doing photography for so long. And I'm used to, like, the the model work and just, like, talking about the painting stuff. So the photography stuff, I just kind of, like, go on autopilot. Yeah, I just, my, uh... It's been a rough end to 2023 and a rough start to 2024, but I'm having fun doing this stream today, so you don't need to worry about it. And, uh, you know, I've still been working on stuff. There's still stuff in the pipeline, I just haven't been super fast at doing it. But I appreciate the concern and the well wishes. Hope you're doing well as, as well. Okay, I think, yeah, we're at the point with blending this gradient where I could keep going, but it'll be diminishing returns the more I go at it, so we're just going to move to tidying up the borders now. That's uh, that's always a point with every, every time I'm, like, glazing some kind of gradient, whether it's on a base or a uh, Gundam armor panel, it's, um... There's always a point where it's like, okay, I've blended, I've done three passes of blending on this. Diminishing returns, I should just call it done now. It's like, this still looks more than smooth enough. An S23 Ultra, yeah. Smartphone cameras are pretty solid these days. Yeah, that definitely is a lot more software. You should, there should be a mode on your camera to shoot raw files if you use like fancier photo editing software like photoshop or lightroom those aren't the only ones that will read raw files that's more like if you want to be able to get the white balance of your photos like exactly right after the fact shooting raw is good for that yeah especially with like gumpla and toy photography the kind of like focal length AKA zoom or like wide angle you use makes a big difference. And of course, um, lighting. Yeah, TM, uh, the Mighty Joe Studio, your photos look very good too. Yeah, the whole photography side of things is kind of almost a hobby unto itself. Plus, that was one of the edges I had coming in to the Gunpla stuff, was I already, like, worked as a photographer and done a decent amount of video work. 
but even that I still like learned a lot because like I was used to taking photos of like and I'd taken a decent amount of photos of my minis and stuff but you know those are smaller than Gunpla on average definitely changed or my, my approach to photo photographing Gunpla models has changed since I started I mean, the first Gunpla I built was way back in 2017, but I didn't paint a Gunpla until 2020. Yeah, glossy can be tough like that. Uh, yeah, polarizing filter is not... Uh, Polarizing filter, I'm, I only really use those if I'm doing photos outside to, like, make the sky look more blue or I'm doing, like, landscape photography and stuff. Or, But, yeah, I mean, polarizing does cut. It's supposed to cut glare off. I've never experimented with using that, like, in the indoor setting, though, like, with model kits. And sometimes you can do stuff like you can put, like, white paper or cloth over your lights to diffuse the light and make it a bit softer. Mm, yeah, your mention of matte top coat reminded me that I... I'm going to do the risky thing and probably varnish this with the rattle can of matte top coat, which can have a chance of frosting up sometimes. I don't want to put in the effort of getting the airbrush going. I never use the rattle can matte varnish on Gundam models themselves. I'll use it on miniatures just because it's faster and I have to do a lot of them. Or I'll use it on terrain as well. You know, the less consequential stuff. All right. Bring back the goosh in here. Okay, that looks like my edge highlight. I haven't quite done done it the same way as the other one, but that's all right. Yeah, I've had to. I've had some hobby nightmare days of like finishing a model and not taking enough care when I'm, like, spraying the varnish on and be like, cool, I just made it, like, a frosted... a frosted a and w root, root beer mug now. Great. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I'll just do two quick passes of edge highlighting, and then we'll be done. Right, I guess I will uh, tidy up the rim... Hopefully I don't mess up there. That'll be awkward. Are you talking about my free hands or the Mighty Joe's free hands? Either way, thank you. And I see a part that could have been blended a bit better there. Perhaps there's a bit of paint left. Perhaps I can just give it a quick little... Alright, yeah, thanks for stopping by, Dolpho. Appreciate you. Good luck with work. Hope I can catch you in another stream sometime soon. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to... 
or my my freehand filigree gamma wolf squad it's gonna gonna be a sight to behold when it's done in like 2027 <laughs> Okay, we need, I think this is the part where we get one of the nice brushes. Or like maybe a medium quality brush, because it's just the base. Yeah, I think this, this night blue, the pigment stains really, really hard, this brushes are a little more blue stained than I thought they'd be. It's kind of just a normal part of painting though. And now I gotta focus. Of course, my arch nemesis dust is uh, already making its home on this freshly painted base. Some things never change. And yes, I do have an air purifier running in the background. I guess apologies to Dolpha, who's probably left already, but at the end of the stream, I, I'll give those of y'all still watching a sneak peek at, at uh, a project that is being worked on right now alongside the video. Because you know me, I've always got a bunch of different projects happening at the same time. I kind of want to add a drop of white for the final highlight, but I think I got to resist because then it'll look too different from the other base. Hopefully this tip will be sufficient. And it looks like that paint is a little contaminated already, though. So let's just go straight from the source. Yeah, that's as bright as it should be. And we're only hitting the, the uh, corners with this part. to make a gradient inside the edge highlight, sort of. I guess this is just kind of like how edge highlights work. I'm just doing it on a flat surface on edges that aren't really edges.
Okay, just two spots left. Oh man, I hope I'm not getting sick. My I've got a bit of a headache coming in. My joints are achy. I'm I'm gonna hope that that's just from the the barometric pressure of the rapid weather change that's happening in my area right now. So I got lots of work to do. But I don't know, I feel like I'll need a nap after this stream. Alright. Now we're just going to tidy up the black rim and then call it a day. Call it a day stream-wise, that is. Let's just clean up the palette a bit here. Oh, I need to grab the black paint as well. Our good old friend Vallejo Surface Primer. I can just keep using this brush. Should have enough control. And that's the part where I really gotta concentrate. Uh, oh, there we go. There's a burp. You get one burp this stream. I do like the daytime and morning streaming, but there is that the major downside of usually I don't drink carbonated drinks until the evening. So daytime streams have like less burps. Hand is a little shaky right now, but usually that doesn't stop me. I can see the end. Spilled over a little bit there, but it's right next to the really dark blue, so I think I can just leave it. I can glue the stand or Ariel's flight stand to the base strategically to hide like a couple mistakes, probably. But the one advantage the Goosh and Kitbash has over this is it's got the big, thick legs that cover up a big part of the base to distract from any imperfections, whereas the aerial is just going to be on a flight stand, so the imperfections might be slightly easier to pick out, but I still think most people will be looking at, you know, the aerial that's covered in filigree.
All right. And just because there is a bit of spillover onto the side, just do one quick coat. Probably need to, that's probably a bit too thinned. Just gotta do one quick coat of paint across the side of the base for consistency. The advantage of the Games Workshop round bases that I've used before is that you don't have to like paint that inside rim meticulously like you just saw me doing. But the top of those bases have a texture on them, so I mean what I've done before is like cut out and sand down a piece of plastic card to go on top. Because there's also like a divot in the middle of the base that's pretty visible. So I think... At the end of the day, I prefer these Reaper bases because gluing the piece of plastic card on top is kind of annoying. The Games Workshop bases have less tendency to be warped, though. With these, with this size of Reaper base, I haven't really had any major problems with warping, but some of the larger ones I have. Okay, if you have any last-minute questions, comments, super chats, or whatever, now's the time to get those in. It's going to start wrapping up this stream here. We're at uh, an hour and a half. That's about what I expected for how long these things usually take to paint. It was a fun time. I'd like to thank you all again for joining. Oh, right, I did say. I'll just I'll give you the just the ever-so-slightest uh, preview of one of the things being worked on on the side right now. Just got to tidy up my wet palette a bit. Bear with me. It's in sub assemblies right now. And it's going to stay that way for this sneak peek in particular, but yeah, you'll see more of it soon enough. Can anyone guess what this model is? I'll give you a hint. It's not a Gundam, but it's made by Bandai. Let's just see its face. As you can see, I've done my classic shifter paint application. Got a leg here. This is the knife it's going to be holding, but the knife blade you know, was airbrushed a different shifter paint color. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Those of you watching the stream, keep it secret, but it's the LBX Pandora. I'm not entirely sure when it's going to show up on a YouTube video, but it will eventually. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Okay, well on that note, I'm going to wrap up the stream officially now. If I wasn't feeling a little fevery and achy right now, I would maybe half commit to when the next stream is going to be, but... I'd say that might be a little ill-advised right now. But uh, thanks again for coming to the stream, everybody. And I will talk to you again as soon as I can. Goodbye.